Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Isabella from Royal Crown. This fragrance is one of my favorite from the house and if you know my love for Royal Crown, you know how much I really am just super impressed and obsessed with this very expensive house of perfume and I've just been wearing this fragrance and I'm ready to review it for you guys. So if you'd like to know what I think, then keep watching. For transparency purposes, I purchased this bottle. This was not sent to me to review. I reviewed pretty much most of my Royal Crown fragrances. I've, I've ranked my Royal Crown fragrances. I'll link all those videos below. I've only been sent one bottle of Royal Crown. Um, and that was Rose Muscat. And that kind of like opened the doorway of me really loving this house. And one of the fragrances that was on my must buy list, just based on the notes and the hype around it was Isabella. Now, Isabella is a beautiful floral treat. It really centers on tuberose, other white flowers, rose. And what I love about this fragrance specifically is the vanilla. The vanilla takes this floral fragrance and kind of turns this into this really delicious like gourmand-esque experience in a way that I find to be really delicious, really beautiful, really sexy, and also really sophisticated. And I'm really excited to review this fragrance for you guys. So as usual, Royal Crown has a variety of different notes in here. So I'm going to read the notes for you. At the top, you have orange blossom, neroli, Bulgarian rose, and peach nut. At the heart, you have absolute tuberosa, perla, Iris, Fiorentina, and Ylang Ylang. And at the base, you have Santal Mysore, uh, Madagascar Vanilla, Cinnamon, and Amber. Now, what I like most about this fragrance is aside of it being a beautiful, delicious vanilla fragrance, and I really love what Royal Crown does with vanilla, is that this is a beautiful and just bright, gorgeous tuberose fragrance. So if you are a tuberose lover, this is a must try. Maybe not buy a bottle because this is ridiculously expensive, but if you have the opportunity to try this fragrance and you do love tuberose, definitely get your nose on this. It's beautiful. Now tuberose is one of those notes where it can definitely be a little chameleon. It can be very tropical, very fruity. It can transport you to a lush, exotic locale. It can be something that can be very creamy, very youthful, very flirty. It can also be kind of dated, especially if it's a little bit more musky, more mature, sophisticated, and elegant. What I like about Isabella is it has this kind of creaminess because of the vanilla and a little bit of a playfulness when it's paired with the neroli and the orange blossom. And it has this kind of beautiful, kind of lively, sparkling, uplifting sunniness, but it still has this maturity to it that's really anchored in the woods and the rose. It's really gorgeous. Now this fragrance specifically has some really beautiful kind of deep powdery notes in it, semi-basalmic notes as well that really work to make this smell very mature and adds a touch of elegance to this fragrance without it being too sunshiny, but it doesn't dull the brightness that this fragrance has and it doesn't ruin the beautiful, delectable deliciousness that this vanilla has either. Everything works in harmony together to really create a very fun, very mature, but still very playful and beautiful experience. I am somebody who loves rose fragrances. I love tuberose and I love white flowers. And this just is a near perfect fragrance in all of those degrees. A near perfect rose fragrance, a near perfect tuberose fragrance, a near work perfect just white floral fragrance that has beautiful touches of things that I love to see in these fragrances a maturity, a sophistication, a playfulness, a flirtiness, a creaminess, a deliciousness, a, did I say playfulness? Probably a brightness to it. There's just something about this fragrance that I find to be just so well blended, so well crafted, and just so ridiculously special. It is a very expensive bottle of perfume. Again, exceptionally expensive. I believe it's over $500 full retail price for a bottle of this, but it's one of the fragrances from Royal Crown where I can definitely see the price point in every aspect of it. Now, I have no problem 
seeing the price point in a lot of different things. And if you know how I collect fragrances, price really doesn't matter to me too much. I mean, there are places where I think a fragrance is overpriced or fragrances that I think are expensive but worth the price point. And even within luxury expensive houses, I can see the worth in these fragrances in regards to presentation and the quality of the ingredients and how everything is crafted and put together. And there are some fragrances in Royal Crown that I really admire and love and I see and smell the craftsmanship in the presentation and I smell the quality of the fragrance but sometimes some of the compositions don't smell like maybe they should command that much money but I do want to collect them all kind of like Pokemon so I'm not opposed to investing money into the house I don't think that it is overpriced but they are expensive this is one of the fragrances from the house where I can definitely understand and smell just from presentation, quality, and just the way the fragrance smells. It smells luxurious, it smells special, it smells beautiful, and there's just something about it that is just near masterpiece level, especially if you love the elements of something mature, but still playful, beautiful, delicious, bright, uh, just, just gorgeous. If you're a rose lover, if you're a white floral lover, if you're a tuberose lover, like I said, you gotta try it at least once. Just try and see if you can track down a sample, decant of it. It's worth experiencing at least once. It is one of the most special fragrances from the line and one that I really, really enjoy. So that is my review of Isabella from Royal Crown. Now, as always, when we're talking about expensive fragrances, uh, before I wrap up this review, I'll let you know a little bit about performance and how this fragrance develops on the skin. What I like about Isabella specifically is that this fragrance is very linear. It opens up very sunny, very strong on the tuberose. You get a lot more of the vanilla in the opening, and as it kind of wears on your skin, you get a little less vanilla, a little bit more of the woods, a little tiny bit more of the cinnamon, and a lot more of the rose and becomes a little bit more spicy and a little bit more balsamic, but you still get that warm, delicious um, vanilla that makes it really delicious, kind of gourmand-esque with those beautiful florals and woods. It's just really special. And if you like the opening, you'll like the end of the fragrance too. It pretty much doesn't change too much in regards to smelling completely different from beginning to end. Now, I also like that this fragrance does perform pretty well in regards to longevity, projection, and sillage. So if in regards to investing a lot of money in a fragrance, if you don't want to invest in a fragrance that doesn't have lasting power, this fragrance on my skin tends to last a pretty good long time, at least six to eight hours, at least it can last longer, but I've only been wearing it the past few months and it's been on the colder side, so I couldn't tell you how it would last more in the spring and summertime and projection seems to be pretty beastly actually. It tends to fill a room and does have a sexy little trail to it. So if you're looking something to wear to a party or to make an impression, I think this is the type of fragrance that would work really well. Also, usually with wet floral fragrances, especially ones that are a little bit spicier or have an underlying a powdery, uh, kind of vibe to it. Normally I say those fragrances might be a little challenging for a professional environment, but what I like about this fragrance is it really focuses on this bright, beautiful tuberose, and I don't find that to be too challenging or too intimidating. So the intimidating aspects of white florals are more toned down in this fragrance. So I don't think that this would be something that I think would be too challenging. And so I think that you could wear this in a professional setting like the office or if you were going on a date or to the theater or something like that. In any case, guys, again, that is my review of Isabella. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you've had the opportunity to try this fragrance, I'd love to know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.